Hi everyone and welcome back to another video from the Anime Chem Tutor. Today we are going to look at a CXC Cape Unit 1 pass paper taken from the year 2005. So let us begin. A chemist is given 1.08 gram of a compound labeled X and is asked to determine the molecular formula and the empirical formula. Analysis of X by mass spectrometry gives a relative molecular mass of 108. Elemental analysis shows that compound X contains carbon, hydrogen, and one other element. Among the products obtained when X is burned completely in oxygen are 1,340 cm3 of carbon dioxide and 448 cm3 of nitrogen dioxide. And it is important to know that the volumes of gases are measured as, at STP. So the first question says, define the empirical formula. This is the simplest mole ratio that exists between the atoms within the molecules or compound. Part B says to define the molecular formula. This represents the specific type of atoms and the total number of atoms within a molecule or a compound. So the empirical formula would give you the ratio of between the atoms while the molecular formula, it tells you, it tells us the type of atom that is present within the compound and how many of these atoms are present within the compound or the molecule. Part B of the question says, Give an example of a compound for which the molecular formula is different from the empirical formula. And the compound that was chosen is glucose. Glucose has the formula C6H12O6. And to find the empirical formula, we use the highest common multiple between the elements which is six to find the ratio of carbon to to hydrogen to oxygen which is one to two to one and the empirical formula worked out to be CH2O and the molecular formula for for glucose is C6H12O6 and it is very clear that the empirical formula is different from the molecular formula so let's look at part C of the question part C says use the data given on page 2 to determine the molecular formula of X in order to find the molecular formula we need the empirical formula and things are not so clear-cut here Typically, we, we, we would normally, we would be given the, the percentage of the element or the mass of the element and we go ahead and find the mole and then determine the empirical formula and from that, the molecular formula. But this time, the only thing we are given are the volume, the volumes of these two gases. So that is why it is important for us to write out the equation so we can see exactly where we are going and what exactly we should do now another a method the method that is applied to this equation or to this question is called combustion analysis what is combustion analysis well it is a quantitative method uh, that is used to determine the chemical formula of mostly organic substances that burnt in oxygen in a nutshell so if you look, the carbon dioxide, the nitrogen and the hydrogen produced are directly related to the carbon, the hydrogen and the nitrogen in compound X. So if we can find the carbon here, the moles of carbon here, the moles of nitrogen here and the moles of hydrogen here, we can definitely determine the formula of this compound X. So the first thing we need to do is find the moles of carbon dioxide and nitrogen dioxide. And now we can see why we were given the, 
the we were told that the the process took place at stp because one mole of any gas at stp has a volume of 22.4 dmq so let us find the moles of carbon dioxide that produces uh, 1340 centimeter cube and it is important to know that centimeter cube must be converted to dmq so what we are working with is actually 1.34 dmq so we know that one mole of carbon dioxide equal to 22.4 dmq then how much moles of carbon dioxide would produce a, a, a volume of 1.34 dmq rearrange the equation to find x dmq cancel dmq so the answer will be in moles so x equal to 0 0.06 moles of carbon dioxide but we are not finished yet because we need to find the moles of carbon and so in order to find the moles of carbon in carbon dioxide we would employ the mole ratio right so the mole ratio between carbon and carbon dioxide is one to one so so the mole of carbon is also 0 0.06 moles now let us find the moles of nitrogen dioxide again one mole of nitrogen dioxide produces a volume of 22.4 dmq therefore what mole of nitrogen dioxide would produce a volume of 0.448 dmq rearrange the equation to find what x is and x would represent the mole of nitrogen dioxide which work out to be 0 0.08 which work out sorry pardon me x equal to 0 0.02 moles of nitrogen dioxide and from that the number of moles of nitrogen can be determined because nitrogen to nitrogen dioxide is also a one-to-one -one mole ratio and that would also work out to be 0 0.02 moles of nitrogen in nitrogen dioxide so we have the moles of carbon we have the moles of nitrogen so we know that so we see that it is directly linked to compound x so let us find the moles of water sorry the moles of hydrogen in water to determine the mass of carbon and the nitrogen from their respective moles so that's the first thing we do so the mass of carbon is 0 0.06 moles multiplied by 12 grams and the 12 represent the atomic mass of carbon so carbon with a mole of 0 0.06 has a mass of 0 0.72 grams nitrogen with a mole of 0 0.02 has a mass of 0 0.28 grams and if we if we add this up we should get 1.0 grams so we can use that subtract it from the mass of compound x which was 1.08 grams then the remainder will would definitely be uh, the mass of hydrogen and so once we get the mass of hydrogen we can find the moles of hydrogen by the, by dividing it with the atomic mass of the hydrogen atom and that worked out to be 0 0.08 moles now we have the moles of hydrogen we have the moles of carbon and we also have the moles of nitrogen so we can go ahead and find the empirical formula so let us determine the empirical formula and so the we divide by the lowest number of moles and carbon as a ratio of three hydrogen has a ratio of four and nitrogen has a ratio of one so the empirical formula is definitely c c3 h4n now if you take your calculators and add up the the um the atomic masses of these compound you will get 54 grams per mole which is exactly half the 
relative molecular mass of compound X. That has 108 grams. So if we, and then from that we multiply by 2, we can definitely determine the molecular formula of compound X, which work out to be C6H8N2. If we add up this, 12 times 6, which is 72, plus 8, which is 80, plus 28, we get a total of 108 grams per mole. So this is definitely the formula for the for compound X. And we can see how accurate the, the combustion analysis is in determining the chemical formulas of organic compounds that burnt in oxygen. So that's where we stop for today. Thank you for joining us for on another video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you are learned. I hope you are preparing very hard and smart for your exam. Remember, please remember to subscribe, share and like the video and see you soon. Thank you.